who will give us um, a presentation on uh, Nigeria's progress, the onco elimination strategy of the country, um, and also um, we'll talk about achievements, challenges, and, and how they can be tackled. Um, I will um, briefly share with you um, the agenda so you can see uh, the timelines. Um, so after Professor uh, Nwoke's presentation, uh, we will have a um, panel discussion um, with uh, onco focal points and representatives of the neighboring countries of Nigeria. Uh, we will have uh, Dr. Um, uh, Nadaye Mari Basavi Alaji, head of the onco uh, program for Benin. Uh, we will have Dr. George uh, Nico Ayisi, head of the um, NTD program Onco Focal Points of Cameroon, and we will have Dr. Salisu Adamu, uh, the national coordinator on Onco for uh, Niger. And um, um, just to remind you that um, only the uh, presenters and the panelists uh, will be able uh, to speak. All the other participants are invited to. Uh, um, make their comments and uh, questions uh, through the chat function and we will address these then to the to the uh, speakers um, uh, afterwards um, we have uh, also some time for the q a session and then um, professor Nwoke will will wrap up uh, um, the meeting um, uh, we also have interpretation of English in English, um, French, and Portuguese. Uh, Portuguese, it's at the bottom um, low, at, at the lower uh, menu, uh, it says interpretation. You may have discovered this already. And uh, uh, again, we will uh, do a recording of the webinar, which we will share afterwards together with the uh, presentation. And if you have additional uh, suggestions to improve uh, these kind of country webinars, please kindly share it uh, with us. Um, now it's uh, it's my pleasure to um, hand over um, to uh, Professor Nvoke, and uh, who will uh, talk about Nigeria. Uh, <clears throat> Nadia, uh, I'm I, afraid we have lost yeah. him. We have. He's still on the. To see his name is still to be seen on the uh, on the screen. So. Uh, just uh, a second, uh, be with us. Um, no, it seems we have lost him. Okay, apologies. I will. I will see if I can reach him on his phone. Yeah, I'm, I'm hearing you. Okay, Nadia. Please share my slides. I will, I will. Okay, Professor Nwoke, are you there? Can you hear us? Yeah, yes. I'm here. Ah, okay, excellent. So we are going to share um, your slides. The floor Thank is you. yours. Thank you, my dear ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, anywhere, everywhere you are. I want to thank Gong for giving me and Nigeria the opportunity to share our experience working towards the roadmap 2030 target for crisis control in Nigeria. My name is Professor B.B. Moke. I'm the chairman of NOEC Nigeria. Next slide. Next slide. We are going to look at it from the structure of our presentation from a clinical overview to the progress we have made in the 2030 road, 
map elimination of onchocerciasis. Next slide. Dear colleagues, this is the eight river basins in Nigeria, with most of the tributaries constituting breeding sites and transmission foci. No wonder then we have such high endemic onchocerciasis in Nigeria. Next slide. This is the result we had from the nodule rate when we did Remo epidemical mapping of Nigeria. This is a map we had the distribution of onchocerciasis in Nigeria. The next slide. This is how it is represented on the Nigerian map. And we, this was done by APOC in conjunction with the Federal Minister of Health, Abuja, Nigeria. That based on that remote exercise, this is the picture of onchocerciasis in Nigeria. Next slide. Dear friends, during the CDTI, Community Directed Treatment of Avame Team, WHO and Federal Minister of Health sat down and the red areas were areas we agreed that there should be community directed treatment with Avame Team. And this is the picture we had before the elimination. Thank you very much. Next slide. So based on these, Nigeria came out as the most endemic country in the world, accounting for about 40% of global prevalence of onchocerciasis. Millions of Nigeria living in 36,000 communities in 413 local government areas of 32 states and federal capital territory were estimated to be at risk of the disease. So that is how what we've been battling with since the period of control now to elimination. Next slide. Dear colleagues and friends, this is in the elimination of onchocerciasis as a result of the fact that last scale treatment of avamitin should stop of transmission, especially where the percentage of treatment is high. This thing encouraged Federal Minister of Health to embark on elimination exercise in Nigeria. And, in, and the objective of, of elimination of onchocerciasis in Nigeria by 3030 is to make sure that transmission of onchocerciasis infection through MAM to a point where parasite population is irreversibly moving to its damage or extinction in all the defined areas of onchocerciasis transmission in the country. That is our objective, Federal Ministry of Health objective in this exercise. Next slide. And therefore, in 2015, the Minister of Health consulted and inaugurated the Onchocerciasis Elimination Pro uh, Committee, NOEC, and gave us four uh, terms of reference. One, to provide technical advice on onchocerciasis elimination to the Federal Minister of Health. Two, to support government of Nigeria to develop a national guideline and roadmap for the onchocerciasis elimination in Nigeria. Three, to assess where and when breakpoints have been reached and recommend to the Honorable Minister of Health the localities where avamitin treatment can be safely stopped. And finally, we are charged with responsibility to support government in the preparation of the country's dossier for verification of onchocerciasis, having achieved interruption of transmission of onchocerciasis nationwide. Next slide. Dear friends, immediately we were inaugurated, we had to establish a, a strategic plan. And we asked so many questions. The six most important questions we asked ourselves in 2015, when we inaugurated this 
where we were at that point in the elimination. And to also analyze how we did get to where we were at that point. And also ask a question, what do we need to put in place and where we want to go in the future? And how are we going to get to that future, which is that 2030? What additional skills and resources do we need to put in place to achieve this objective? And how do we know that we have arrived at the elimination of conquest crisis in 2030? These were the strategic questions. And it guided the NOEC to our country today. So these are the members of a NOEC, the membership with me as a humble uh, chairperson and my colleagues are well vast in oncology crisis, in public health. And we have a medical sociologist, we have molecular biologists, and we have all manner of people, including our partners, they, they all constitute uh, part of the NOEC. Some of them are in attendance. Some we are invite them to participate when we have challenges that require their support. And we have enjoyed our company in this group. Next slide. The next question is that, how, what do we do? Working with stakeholders and partners. Uncle Sikasi Elimination is a program of Federal Ministry of Health, Abuja. And we are, in OEC, we are created by the Minister of Health. And it's a technical arm of the elimination exercise. As a result, in OEC in Nigeria limits its function and interaction with any stakeholder or partner to the terms of reference of this establishment. Stakeholders and partners attend our NOAC meetings by the invitation of Federal Minister of Health. Stakeholders and partners are guided by the recommendations and policy decisions of the NOEC and the approval of the Minister of Health. And this has helped us to achieve tremendous success in the elimination process. Next slide. As a way of How do we identify and address our challenges in this elimination process? Dear friends, NOEC has developed milestones and operational activities in the interruption and elimination of fungus cases, each of the transmission zones. In this case, in Nigeria, we use this test as the transmission zones. At each NOEC meeting, Federal Minister of Health and or NGO partners working in each of the transmission zones is requested to present the update of result of elimination activity in the zone. Dear friends, thereafter, the presentation will be discussed extensively. We need to ascertain whether the set objectives or milestones were effectively implemented or whether the expected milestones have been achieved or not. If, for example, the milestone has been achieved, in OEC, we conclude that we are on track for elimination in the zone. And we are applicable, a new milestone will be created and developed for the transmission zone for the next six to 12 months before the next meeting. And if, on the other hand, the milestone has not been reached in the zone, in OEC, we identify the enabling and hindering factors as well as ways to address them including operational research. With this, dear friends, a new milestone and activity will be developed for the transmission zone. And this has guided our activity since 2015. Thank you very much. Next slide. So between May 2015, when we inaugurated, and December, when we had our last meeting, 2022, we have completed the following things, our strategic assignments. We have collected all our valuable recent and historic oncological and tumorological data in 19, 2015, and we use it to develop a template of the picture of oncological in Nigeria. We also created a table for each transmission status and indicated the implementation strategy to achieve the interruption and elimination of the oncological in the area. Number three, dear friends, we also developed map of Nigeria 
showing transmission status color code by state based on historical epidemiological and entomological data. Next. In this last, in this last, we have produced national, gu uh, national guidelines for elimination of oncogenic crises in line with WHO guidelines to create the red map necessary for elimination of oncogenic crises. We have also produced the nationwide provisional sampling size to guide the epidemiological and entomological evaluation for the elimination of oncogenic crises. We didn't want haphazard selection of epidemiological and entomological size. It was unanimously and generally agreed based on criteria and it, it has guided all the partners and every operational research in the field. We have also caused a oncogenic elimination mapping of all the transmission zones and reclassified the transmission zones in view of any emerging results. When we were challenged by Lua Lua, we also had to assess Lua Lua using low scope in all the areas, especially in avametrin naive transmission zones. And number eight, we also have assessed where and when breakpoints have been achieved and made appropriate recommendations to the Honorable Minister of Health, the localities where avametrin treatment can safely be stopped. Next slide. We have also produced national guidelines for elimination. Okay, that was, uh, that was a repeat. Go to number 13, evaluated the impact of treatment on each transmission zone, on that treatment of all the zones until oncogenic crisis is eliminated. And we have also assessed where and when breakpoints have been achieved. Next slide. I'm sorry for that mix up. Next slide. So based on our historical data and the data from APOC and Federal Minister of Health during the control period. Oh, sorry. So what is the transmission status at the time we started? By, we started by May 2015. So we collected all our results, historical and current results, and created a, a status of all the zones or states by May 2016. Dear friends, in 2015, only Nasrawa Plateau State and Zamfara and Kebi State were areas we sus suspected that we have a, interrupted transmission, and we use the color ash. And the areas where we look that interruption is on track, using oncozone model, we now realize that 12 states and federal capital territory, we are in this category, we use yellow. Areas where we suspected that transmission was still ongoing, we use red. In 2015, eight states or zones we are involved. We also realized that there are some areas we had little or no information. We used blue color. And 2015-16, there were 11 of them. At the point we took off on this elimination process, no zone has interrupted UNCO, and no, no zone has eliminated UNCO. So for non for interruption, we use TAN. For elimination, we use green. Next slide. So this was the color we chose in 2016. It's clear that we had uh, some we are information we are very, very scarce. Areas where it was ongoing, as I pointed out, this became our primary color of Uncle's crisis movement to elimination in 2016. Next slide.
From that 2016 to December 2022, dear friends, we have eliminated Uncle Sakayasis in two states. And we are now on post elimination surveillance. And about 2 million people are out of MDA in these two states, Plateau and Nasarawa. Transmission, no one was in, no, no zone was interrupt, has interrupted transmission in 2016. But as I'm reporting the friends today, we have eight states that is no longer needing avamitin for onchocerciasis. And we are now on post uh, transmission surveillance. And about 27 million are out of MDA in this test. In 2016, only five states where, where onchocerciasis was suspected to be interrupted. But at the point of this report, it has increased to 11, and we are working on epidemiological evaluation of these uh, 11 states. By 2016, elimination was on track in 12 states and FCT. It has now reduced, gone up again, and we now have nine of them only. And we are pursuing a periodical evaluation to know its status. In 2016, as many as eight states were suspected to have onchocerciasis transmission ongoing. But at the point of this report, only one is ongoing transmission. However, we have started twice a year and we want to do a periodical evaluation since. Two or three years we started this twice a year treatment. Dear friends, in 2016, we had 11 zones where there were limited or no information, and that has reduced to six. We are currently working on doing oncocytosis mapping. Next slide. So, this was this is what we are we now have on the map of focus crisis in December 2022 great improvement great improvement only one place we now have ongoing and we are working very hard by the end of before the end of this year we will come up with the result of our a periodical evaluation. Next. Next slide. So you can see the upper 2016 color. The lower one is 2022 color. Tremendous improvement. And we are on track. Next slide. So summary of this test, we have breakpoint having reached and we have a treatment has safely been stopped. That is where people no longer have need for a vomiting for oncocytic as at December 2022 in Nigeria. Plateau and Nasrawa, 12 states, 2 million out of drug. Kaduna, 16 local governments, sorry. Plateau and Nasrawa, 12 LGAs. Kaduna, 16 LGS, 2.2 million. Zamfara and Kebi, 15 LGS, 4 million. Delta State, 15 LGS, 2 million. Imo, Abia, Enugu, Anambra, 50 LGS, 18.8 million. So we have a total of 108 LGS that are now out of Metizan for Onco. And we have 29 million people that are no longer in need of Metizan for Onco's crisis in Nigeria by December 2022. And this population is the highest. So
so far in elimination of onchocerciasis. Next slide. There are some challenges we have. The first one is cross-border collaboration in our elimination. Dear friends, recognizing the importance of cross-border collaboration for the success of elimination of onchoic crisis in Africa, the WHO's African Regional Office Committee approved in 2007 the resolution FAFR RC. 57 stroke outray, calling on member states to intensify cross-border activities to strengthen surveillance and avoid spillage of infection to free zones. To address this, dear friends, NOEC has established effective country-country collaboration with Benin and Cameroon to enable us create an operational framework to address cross-border challenges or focus crises to enhance collaborative collective response to eliminating onchocerciasis. Next slide. In areas we have co endemicity with LOS or Lua Lua. The difference in areas where onchocerciasis is co endemic with LOS, even when onchocerciasis is declared, interrupted, or eliminated, our desire and our decision and policy is that MDA will continue in that area for LOF until a periodical evaluation confirms that LOF is eliminated. B, in areas where lower lower is suspected, we have caused an operational research to assess the prevalence of lower lower infection and the risk of central nervous system, especially in avamitin naive transmission zones. Next slide, friend. <clears throat> Can see that uh, when we look at SN related uh, SAAs in two, between 2000, 1999 to 2004, among the 758 cases. Only one dubious one was identified in Nigeria. And Nigeria had distributed millions of avamitin since its inception in the 90s in potentially Lua Lua endemic areas. But only one dubious central nervous SEA had been recorded. In areas where Lua Lua is suspected, their friends, we have cost an operational research to assess the prevalence of lower lower infection and risk of central nervous system events, especially in avamitin naive zones. Next slide. <laughs> I'm pleased to <clears throat> report that Federal Minister of Health with the support of TCC, the Qatar Center, conducted an operation research on a Lua Lua infection in Nigeria. Safe room blood smear technologies, that Cisco was used as a survey instrument in some parts of Nigeria. From the result, a new OEC conducted what? From the result, a new OEC concluded that the risk, the risk of central nervous system event in Nigeria was extremely low and recommended that a VAMI team be used throughout Nigeria. The recommendation was considered by UN health agencies and they accepted the results, but however, recommended that social survey must be conducted in any other naive area before drug distribution is commenced. And that is what we are currently doing. We don't have any challenge up till now. Next. The integrated approach with other NTDs and sectors in Nigeria, in the way you see a federal minister of health, the boss, we have already appreciated the need to integrate uncoelimination elimination with other NTDs and sectors. 
So in Nigeria, Onkosekasi elimination activity are key, keyed into the Federal Ministry of Health Integrated Disease Surveillance Response System, IDSR. For example, at the LGS and frontline health areas, the supervision and monitoring of Onkosekasi activities are being enhanced by those working with other health programs like vitamin A, MPI, nutrition, etc. And we know that integration approach is a sustainable instrument in the elimination of NTDs, including onchocerciasis. Next. We also have other challenges in and critical action we took. In course of our activities, to eliminate oncocytosis crisis in Nigeria, we have encountered some other challenges and have also taken efforts to address them. The first one is with a problem of analysis of our OV16 DBS and PCR analysis or the black flies. We also have the conflict and insecurity challenge Sometimes we don't have adequate counterpart funding. Sometimes we have areas where there is demand of incentive by CDDs. And sometimes in some areas we have declining compliance due to remission of signs and symptoms of onchocerciasis. Next slide. On the laborate, more laboratories of OVC between DBS and PCR analysis of the head of female black flies, it is clear from what I'm been presenting that the volume of our DBS and female black flies for pinocolor and tomolecular evaluation, respectively, in Nigeria is very enormous and requires many molecular laboratories, requires many molecular laboratories to handle them so that the results will be available as at when do. But this is not the case in Nigeria as there are a backlog of samples to be analyzed. To ameliorate this, NOEC has identified one, the Kata Center Molecular Laboratory at JOS, Ogun State University Monte Disciplinary Research Laboratory in Oshobo, Nigerian Institute of Medical Research in Lagos, Effort is also being made to support the setting up of a national laboratory. Also, CDC is working with WHO Collaborative Center at the University of South Carolina to develop checklists for identifying other laboratories that can meet requirements for the quality analysis of related assessment. The next slide, number two. On the conflict or insecurity or resultant migration or internally displaced people, of great worry is that Nigeria has witnessed insecurity challenges resulting in serious massive human migration or displacement. The mobility of human population in and out of endemic areas due to insecurity pose critical challenge in the interruption and elimination of onchocerciasis. By this movement, dear friends, large number of both infected and uninfected individuals has forced, been forced out of their homes and they are now internally displaced. Their friends, immigrants have in Nigeria become more or less important carriers of disease pathogens, including onchocerciasis. Next slide. Dear friends, we have developed some strategies to address this where possible. In situations where migrant population and internally displaced people settle in an area that is already under the MDA, the census of the, of, to determine the coverage is adjusted to account for the new residents or transient population. And since the existing health system used by MDA in daily communities are in the hands of settled population, we had to change strategy. 
To achieve this, dear friends, field workers are now encouraged to mobilize migrants and train their own distributors, which normally will be chosen by them and they'll be responsible for the drug distribution in the displaced population. And I want to tell us that we have achieved a lot of success in this direction in internally displaced camps. Next slide. In Antigua, counterpart funding is a major one. Some projects we have difficulty as a result of bureaucratic bottlenecks. Could may constrain the release of funds, sometimes tend to affect the execution of MDA in endemic communities. We have made two attempts or two strategies to handle them. First is to increase high level advocacy to leadership and other policymakers with persuasive and strong. IEC materials, and this has achieved some level of success in some areas. NOEC is also advocating that oncocytosis elimination activity be carried into the Federal Ministry of Health Integrated Surveillance response. As I said initially, in doing that, we now use a lot of other program uh, health workers at the front line to enhance our activity, and this has also yielded tremendous results in our elimination process. In the demand for incentive by CDDs, showing that we have some attrition sometimes for response to communities as CDDs have partly been attributed to demand for incentive by CDDs. Again, payment for community-based workers by other programs has also stimulated this demand for incentive. Some programs, in the endemic areas, give the, their own workers money. So how do we in, try to reduce this challenge? Presently, we are doing three things. We now advocate that affected communities select their CDDs along King ship line, and this has given us good results. NOC has also encouraged the program officer to utilize CDDs from other head intervention programs. It's also very interesting to know that we have achieved some success. And to continue, we have to we continue to sensitize our community leadership and involvement of female CDDs. And female CDDs have also helped us to improve MDA in the endemic communities. Next. In areas where we are eliminated or suspected interruption, interruption have been achieved. Villagers there believe that oncocytosis is non life threatening disease. But what is some clinical manifestations such as oncodermatitis, blindness, impaired vision, the fatty pathology made, made in endemic communities to comply with the MDA? As expected, many years of treatment with avamitin has led to the remission of signs and symptoms of onco in endemic communities, even when oncocytosis has not been eliminated. Strategically, we are, we are expected to continue our MDA in these communities with remission signs and symptoms until oncocytosis is eliminated area. Unfortunately, for very obvious reasons, which are outlined. The remission of signs and symptoms of oncocytosis has led to decline in compliance to MDA in some communities, even when the disease has not been eliminated. Next. Declining compliance due to remission of signs and symptoms has become a major problem. So we have to adopt some strategies to address these challenges. When we encounter this in the field, we had to advocate for to redesignate or redesign our IEC for continuous treatment, including the community's perception of other health benefits of abamitin. In Plateau State and Natural, we have done that. It is giving us tremendous results. We had to develop special IEC to sensitize endemic communities in areas where we are carrying out post-treatment surveillance or post-elimination surveillance. I want to say 
that the result has been very impressive. Next. Progress towards Uncle Sakaiasis elimination in line with WHO 2030 NTD roadmap. The 2030 NTD roadmap targets for Uncle Sakaiasis are one, to stop mass treatment drug administration of avamitin in at least one foci, one focus in 34 countries. Two, to stop NDA in more than 50% of the population in at least 16 countries to stop NDA in the entire endemic population of at least 12 countries. I want to state that Nigeria is on track to be one of the 16 countries to stop NDA in more than 50% of the population. It is the aim of Nigeria to become one of the countries, one of the countries to stop NDA in the entire endemic population depending on the security challenges and population movement. Next. My closing remark, dear friends, I'm pleased to inform us seven years of activity in the elimination of oncocytosis in Nigeria has produced impressive results. Transmission of oncocytosis has been interrupted or eliminated in 10 states, and a total of 29 million persons from 108 local government areas in Nigeria are no longer in need of a vomiting for oncocytosis. The strategic plan and activities to meet up the 2021-2030 to eliminate the transmission of oncocytosis in order to attend sustainable development goal has been established. This is our seven and a half years still worship. I want to thank all of us, our partners, our scientists, people at the end of the road, local government frontline, all the persons that contributed, pioneer uh, uh, NGDO coalition who have continued to work with us, including our UN agencies, we want to say how happy we are. We are ready to continue to work with you until Uncle Sakaisis is eliminated in Nigeria. Next. Thank you very much. Abrigado, Messi Boku, and Messi. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much, Professor Nuoke. This was an excellent presentation. It's very impressive uh, to see um, the accomplishments and the progress. Um, it, congratulations, um, excellent work. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, uh, seen there are a couple of questions coming in. I suggest we uh, collect this uh, for the uh, question answer session. And I would like to um hand over the floor to the panelists uh, we will have now uh, about 20 minutes of uh, discussion with the panelists uh, with the representatives of um, the onco programs of the neighboring countries of nigeria uh, we will start uh, with dr nadaye marie basabi alaji um, head of the ONCO program of uh, Benin. Um, I will hand over the floor to you, Dr. Uh, Marie Basavi. Uh, bonjour, uh, pourriez-vous uh, nous uh, parler uh, de vos expériences uh, uh, transfrontalières uh, avec uh, le Nigeria et uh, uh, les enjeux et uh, votre, votre Bonjour, si je ne sais pas si vous m'écoutez. Vous m'entendez? Oui, on, on peut vous, vous entendre très bien. Merci. Allez-y, oui. s'il vous plaît. Oui, euh... par rapport au Bénin, comme je l'avais dit, nous avons dix communes qui sont frontaliers avec le Nigeria. Au niveau de ces dix communes, c'est que nous avons encore des prévalences élevées par rapport à l'oncocercos. Et lorsque nous faisons les traitements de masse, actuellement, c'est que nous n'atteignons pas encore et 85% de couverture thérapeutique au niveau de ces dix communes-là. Donc, pour assurer la lutte contre l'oncocercose au niveau du Bénin et du Nigeria, ce que nous proposons, c'est qu'il y ait, par exemple, des traitements de masse conjoints faits simultanément entre les deux pays pour pouvoir voir ce qui se passe au niveau des frontières 
Et aussi, si nous pouvons organiser ensemble des réunions transfrontalières pour pouvoir partager nos expériences en matière de lutte contre l'oncocercose, afin que nous puissions répondre aux besoins d'élimination d'ici 2030. C'est ce que j'ai à dire par rapport à ce que nous souhaitons par rapport au Nigeria du côté du Bénin. Merci. Merci. Merci beaucoup, euh, Docteur Passabi. Euh, C'est très intéressant. Euh, merci beaucoup, Docteur euh, Marie Passabi. C'est très intéressant de, de voir que, de, que vous avez euh, des engagements avec le Nigeria, des plans avec le Nigeria. Euh, je passe euh, la parole maintenant à Docteur Georges euh, Nico Aïssi. Euh, euh, les points focaux euh, pour Oncocercos à Cameroun, euh, s'il vous plaît. Docteur Georges, vous êtes là? Si, euh, Nadia, j'espère qu'on me suit. Je suis dans, dans une zone euh, relativement reculée de la capitale, donc j'espère que le signal euh, Internet est bon et qu'on m'écoute bien. On, euh, on vous entend très clairement. Okay, là. Merci beaucoup. Merci. merci beaucoup pour cette invitation et merci beaucoup Nigeria pour tous les efforts qu'il fait et qui sont encourageants évidemment pour tous les pays de la sous-région, euh, toutes ces euh, populations qui sont euh, bientôt en arrêt de traitement. Euh, je veux dire que par rapport à, au Cameroun, euh, la collaboration avec Nigeria, euh, déjà au niveau euh, stratégique, euh, nous participons déjà assez régulièrement aux réunions. Euh, du comité d'élimination du Nigeria, euh, là où on partage ensemble les préoccupations transfrontalières. Nous avons participé déjà à deux ou trois réunions du comité d'élimination du Nigeria, euh, avec euh, euh, bien souvent certaines recommandations, dont l'une d'elles vient d'être partagée par ma collègue du Bénin, mener des, 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 des traitements de masse euh, euh, conjoints. Je suis le docteur Georges Kouaï, je suis le Comité national MTM du Cameroun. Euh, ce que je voulais dire, c'est que le Nigeria et nous, on partage une frontière d'à peu près euh, 1500 km, 1200 à 1500 km. Et cette frontière traverse, évidemment, vous pouvez l'imaginer, des faciès totalement différents de transmission de l'Ontario. Plus au nord, là, on avait des préoccupations euh, sécuritaires de type euh, euh, Boko Haram. Euh, à l'époque, quand on regardait la cartographie euh, du Nigeria de ce côté-là, elle n'était pas encore définie. Ça veut dire qu'ils euh, ils étaient dans un processus euh, de, de cartographie d'élimination parce qu'ils n'avaient pas encore défini clairement le statut de la partie nord qui est frontalière. Je pense que maintenant, quand je regarde euh, le, la, les cartes sur Espagne, euh, la situation a été plus ou moins là-bas. Ils sont en phase active. En regard de cette zone du côté nord du Cameroun, nous, on n'a que trois districts au niveau de, de l'extrême nord qui sont dans une zone de barrage en plus. Et puis, dans la Damawa, un peu plus au sud, on a une situation qui est en train de, 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 de s'améliorer et d'évoluer dans le bon sens. Hein, parce que là-bas, on a des prévalences de moins de 2 et on pense que s'il fallait arrêter le traitement, ce serait dans cette partie nord du Cameroun euh, qu'on devra arrêter euh, très prochainement si jamais les efforts euh, qu'on fait actuellement sont maintenus. Là, on a plus de problèmes, c'est dans la partie forestière du sud, euh, où on a également un peu de loi-loi, euh, la, la, la partie forestière euh, de, de notre frontière sud, où on est encore en phase très active, et de l'autre côté aussi, on est en phase active. C'est là où, euh, évidemment, il faudra travailler beaucoup, parce que de, des deux côtés de la frontière, on est en pleine période de lutte. Et, et on attend beaucoup de toutes les collaborations transfrontalières au Nigeria pour adresser euh, ces points chauds. Euh, voilà ce que je pourrais dire sur ce qui est des, de la composante transfrontalière au Nigeria. Je vous remercie. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, uh, Dr. Georges. Uh, C'est très intéressant de, uh, de uh, connaître uh, vos plans et vos activités en commun. Um, je passe maintenant la parole à um, Dr. Salissou uh, de Niger, s'il vous plaît.
On ne vous entend pas. On vous entend pas. Vous devez... Euh... Le micro. Okay. Ah oui, bonjour Nadia. Merci beaucoup de me passer la parole. Je suis le docteur Salis Adamou, le coordinateur du programme national de l'élimination de l'Oncocerco et de la Finalité de la du Niger. Merci beaucoup, professeur, pour cette excellente présentation. Donc, je vais couper le micro et le, le, la vidéo. Et je suis très heureux de constater que le district, le, le state de, de Kébi, qui est frontalier avec le Nigeria, avec le Niger, c'est dans ce state-là qu'il n'y a pas d'activité de transmission en cours et qu'il n'y a même pas de traitement. Ça, c'est une situation qui me rend heureux. Parce que le district Niger, le problème ne viendra pas du Niger, parce que le district voisin du, 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 du state de Kébi, qui est le district sanitaire de Gaïa, du côté Niger, si la situation est clean là-bas. Il n'y a pas de problème là-bas. Deuxième, ma deuxième satisfaction est liée au fait que le Nigeria pense que le state de, de, de Kébi, il suspecte l'interruption de la transmission. Cette situation nous réconforte parce que le Niger est en train de consulter notre dossier élimination et ce dossier élimination doit tenir compte de la considération transfrontalière. On n'a pas de problème avec le Burkina, on n'a pas de problème avec le Bénin. À le Nigeria, on n'a pas de problème. Ça, c'est une situation qui nous va droit au cœur. Dans ce, cette zone frontalière avec le Nigeria, nous avons le district sanitaire de Gaïa et de Djunju, dans lequel nous avons des activités entomologiques qui sont en cours. Nous avons fait aussi les activités sérologiques au Elisa au V16. Je peux vous dire que dans ce district sanitaire, la situation est calme. Il n'y a aucune transmission qui est en cours. Donc, le Nigeria peut dormir tranquillement pour ce qui concerne le Niger. Donc, le risque qu'il y a. Le risque, on ne peut pas dire qu'il n'y a pas de risque. Il y a un risque pour le Niger. Parce qu'au Nigeria, il y a encore des, des sites où des transmissions sont en cours. Donc, ces risques sont liés à quoi Au déplacement massif de nos populations. Parce que nos populations, c'est des populations commerciales. Elles se déplacent du Niger pour aller vers le Niger en grande quantité. Et cette trans, cette, ce, 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 mouvement, ce mouvement de population peut être un risque pour le Niger. C'est pourquoi nous voulons, avec le Nigeria, continuer à communiquer. Communiquer sur le développement, en tout cas, de leurs activités d'élimination dans les districts sanitaires frontaliers avec le Niger, notamment ceux de Kébi et ceux de Zanfara. Donc, en faisant quoi En instituant un cadre de collaboration. Ce cadre de collaboration ne va pas être seulement, seulement des réunions pérennes, des réunions en présentiel. Ça peut être des réunions, des petites réunions qu'on peut eh, organiser comme ça, en ligne. Cela peut permettre d'échanger non seulement des documents, mais aussi d'échanger des informations en temps réel. À la dernière réunion du comité d'élimination du Niger qu'on a organisé, mais j'ai même invité le professeur, mais il n'a pas pu avoir le temps de venir. Je l'invite, je profite pour lui lancer une autre invitation parce que nous allons faire la prochaine réunion du 8 au 9 février prochain. Donc, professeur, vous êtes invité. Vous êtes invité à prendre part à la réunion du comité d'élimination, la cinquième et la dernière, au cours de laquelle le ministre de la Santé va présenté officiellement à la représentante de l'OMS de d'élimination du Niger pour sa vérification. En tout cas, je suis très content. Je suis très content de, de, de l'avancement de, des activités de l'élimination de l'oncocerco de Niger et cela nous va droit au cœur. Merci encore, professeur, et merci beaucoup à Nadia et à toute l'équipe de GON qui a organisé cette bonne activité, cette bonne initiative. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Dr. Salissou. Uh, merci. Uh, merci. Uh, thank you uh, um, very much to, to the panelists. And I see some of the questions have been addressed uh, already by um, uh, the, the panelists. So I open the floor now um, to among the panelists and the, the, the speaker. Um, uh, if, if there are additional questions, uh, topics and um, and questions uh, you would like to to address and share um, maybe first uh, um, professor Nivoka, um please uh, let us know if in case you have any additional 
comments on the uh, on the presentations of the panelists. Oh, I think we uh, we have have we lost Professor Walker. Are you there? Hello. Yeah. yeah. Oui, Nadia. Yes, yes. Moi, je voulais juste échanger. Allô? Oui, oui. Uh, uh, on Nadia, je voulais juste demander au professeur et à notre collègue Georges du Cameroun, parce que comme ils ont des relations transfrontalières qu'ils organisent et qu'il y a des zones de sécurité, Boko Haram entre les deux pays, comment est-ce qu'ils organisent ces activités d'évaluation dans ces zones? Comment est-ce que ça se fait concrètement? Si en deux minutes, vous pouvez me le dire. C'était une question pour Dr. Jean. Concernant du follow à Thaïs. C'était Dr. Salissou, c'était une question pour Dr. Georges. Si je peux, si je peux, oui. si je peux répondre à mon collègue Salissou. Euh, pour le moment, on n'est pas, pas rentré encore dans une phase. On n'a encore rien mis de, à, sur place de structuré. Actuellement, notre participation aux, aux réunions, euh, non, 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 notre participation conjointe, parce qu'on a également déjà invité euh, euh, le, le président Woké et, et, et la coordination du Nigeria à, à des réunions du comité des nations du Cameroun. Ces participations visent d'abord à, à, à comprendre, à connaître mieux les réalités des deux côtés de la frontière. Pour le moment, on n'a encore vraiment rien structuré et, et je pense que c'est aussi l'objet de telles réunions, c'est de voir qu'est-ce qu'on peut construire dans, 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 dans connaissance de ces réalités. Euh, je, 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 je vous ai parlé du côté du volet, le volet épidémiologique, mais je peux aussi ajouter le volet sécuritaire. Dans toutes ces zones que nous partageons avec le Nigeria, la sécurité pose un gros problème. Euh, il est question de voir ensemble comment est-ce que nous pouvons euh, contourner euh, ces problèmes sécuritaires et faire avancer les résultats du programme. La, la partie sud, comme vous l'imaginez bien, dont j'ai parlé tout, tout à l'heure, où on est en phase de, de lutte, euh, on est en phase de lutte dans les deux, euh, dans les deux euh, dans les deux parties de la frontière. C'est la partie au Cameroun qui est euh, minée par euh, euh, la crise anglophone et, 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 et qui rend certes la, 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 la réalisation chez nous des traitements de masse possibles parce qu'on euh, n'a jamais arrêté le traitement de, de masse dans la, la partie anglophone du pays. Mais également, je sais que de l'autre côté de la frontière nigériane, il y a aussi peut-être quelques petits problèmes sécuritaires. Le problème, c'est la, la question maintenant, c'est comment on avance ensemble à avoir des résultats dans ce contexte euh, d'insécurité euh, transfrontalière ou bien euh, que nous vivons ensemble. Jusqu'ici, on n'a pas reconstruit quelque chose de structuré et on pense que la mise en place de GON va permettre aussi d'apporter un, un soufflet à, à ces intérêts. Voilà. Je ne sais pas si je réponds à la question de, de Salis ou mon cher collègue du Niger. C'est bon, je suis satisfait. Merci beaucoup. Merci. C'est difficile. Merci. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. George, Dr. Salisu. I see uh, Professor Nwoke um, is raising his um, uh, hand. Uh, please, Professor Nwoke. Thank you. Thank you. Are you hearing me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. I want to inform our Cameroonian colleagues that six, five uh, transmission zones have boundary with, with Cameroon, except in Bono at the northern part of Nigeria, not east. We have information on Adamawa and Karaba. And our, our information is that Uncle Sekasi's elimination is on track. Result from Benue and Cross River shows that 
transmission is suspected to have been, been interrupted. Maybe one we want to know the economical status of the bordering areas of Cameroon and Nigeria in these zones. We are unable to get information in bonus here because of this security. But Adamawa, Taraba, Enue, and Cross River, the bordering part of Cameroon, why we want to know the political resource or economical resource in the area. It will help us plan on how to eliminate uncle psychiatrists there. If you remember too, we agree that we need the names of the village heads along the boundary in both Nigeria and Cameroon, so that we can begin to mobilize and remobilize them. Dear friends, it will surprise you to note that these bordering communities share the same market. Sometimes they go to the same Masalachi or church. Sometimes Cameroonian borders use Nigerian money and Nigerian uh, borders use Cameroonian money. So it's easier to mobilize those brothers, even though in the separate countries. So that is the situation we have there. So I'm looking forward that next time around that we're going to have information on the status of onchocerciasis in the Cameroonian part of these borders. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Nwoka. Any any other um, comments or reactions uh, from the from the panelists? Um, I see there is a question um, for Professor Nwoka coming from um, the participants. Um, uh, Nigeria is, is very far in its onco elimination and um, has achieved this with strong surveillance um, to be in place. Uh, can, uh, can you share um, how did Nigeria manage to establish uh, this status? Professor Walker, could you say anything more on, on this? Hello? Yes? I didn't get your question. Sorry, can you, did you hear the question? It's breaking from my own end here. Okay, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Professor Walker? Can you hear me, Professor Novoka? I can hear you now. Okay, very, very good. So there is a question to you um, that uh, Nigeria um, seems to I'm not to have... hearing you now. Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Professor Novoka? I can hear you now, yes. Yes, so the question to you from the audience is, if you can say um, anything more, how did you achieve this strong surveillance uh, um, status uh, and, and activity? How, why are you so good in, in doing surveillance activities? How did you achieve this? Come again. How do we achieve surveillance? Yes, how did you establish um, this strong surveillance mechanism? As I said, we had to uh, develop a general uh, breeding size and uh, and uh, high, 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 high first line villages based on our results from Remo, based on on a, a map, based on GIS, based on all information. We now choose a developed for the whole Nigeria areas we think they should go and do remo or epinoco survey now when we, after doing that we now identify the areas 
went for prospection, identify whether they are breeding size or not, or whether the flies are breeding there and biting there. Having established it, we now follow the WHO protocol. In areas where we suspect that transmission is interrupted, we do a periodical survey. In this each zone or each transmission zone, children less than 10, a, a minimum of 30,000 per zone will be, their dry, bl uh, bl uh, dry blood spot will be collected and analyzed using OV16, ELISA. And then we now look at the WHO guideline and then change the status or increase by times two treatment. Where we have established transmission is interrupted, we need to go and collect flies, a minimum of 6,000 flies per zone, transmission zone, and analyze PCR and follow the WHO guideline to reclassify the, the area. The WHO guideline has made provision on how to do the assessment, and Nigeria has domesticated it by producing their own national guideline. So each nation is supposed to develop a guideline based on WHO guideline, domesticate it. It makes it easier. Thank you. Thank you. Are you hearing? Yes. Thank you. Yes, Dr. George. Uh, oui, désolé, je avoir uh, activé uh, ma main. Je me rends compte que je l'ai pas fait, uh, mais, mais c'est pas grave. Uh, je j'aimerais quand même dire que uh, pour parler de, de de succès que le Nigeria a eu, c'est que le Nigeria a eu très rapidement. Et c'est ce qu'on a découvert au cours des réunions, a eu très rapidement le, 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 le bon sens de, d'abord peut-être facilité par le fait qu'il y avait un peu de moyens pour faire les évaluations, les cartographies des nations, a rapidement fait euh, des cartographies des nations dans le pays pour pouvoir classer les différentes zones, les différentes, euh, les, les différents états et leur code couleur euh, que nous avons aussi un peu copié permet rapidement de voir, juste en regardant la, une carte, de, de savoir là où les efforts doivent être faits, là où les efforts sont en train d'être, euh, là, là, là où on avance bien, là où on doit faire des efforts. Et voilà, ce code couleur, je pense qu'il est, il, il, il est bon que la plupart des pays, euh, le Nigeria ayant servi comme modèle, que la plupart des pays l'adoptent. Si on a des codes couleurs qui veulent dire la même chose euh, 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 pour tous, on peut avancer rapidement. On peut savoir, par exemple, dans cette frontière, si on a un code couleur, parce que je sais qu'ils ont choisi le rouge pour les, la zone qui est encore en pleine lutte, et le bleu, ils ont le bleu, ils ont, bref, ils ont un code couleur qui permet quand même de situer juste d'un coup d'œil les zones où on doit faire plus d'efforts, les zones où on doit identifier les interventions, les zones où on doit euh, euh, imaginer d'autres interventions en dehors de celles qui sont classiques. Ça permet que tout le monde soit... Euh, voilà. Nous au Cameroun, je suis que si on, si on faisait, si on mettait un peu de, un peu de moyens pour faire des évaluations, on verrait que beaucoup de nos régions évoluent, ont, ont évolué probablement dans le, dans le bon sens. Parce que pour beaucoup des, pour beaucoup de, 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 de régions et de districts, les évaluations datent de 10 ans. Et en 10 ans, il peut se passer vraiment beaucoup de choses. Et la partie nord, par exemple, du pays dont, dont vous pouvez parler, où les prévalences sont relativement faible actuellement et où on envisage dans les prochaines années euh, ou bien moins euh, commencer les évaluations épidémiologiques euh, d'élimination ou bien et, éventuellement les, les évaluations entomologiques euh, vont dans ce sens-là. Il faut mettre des moyens pour faire des évaluations, des, des, des cartographies d'élimination et tout, 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 tout le monde verrait ses efforts compensés ou alors pourrait réajuster ses politiques euh, vers l'élimination. Je vous remercie. Thank you, Dr. George, uh, for, for making these uh, recommendations. That's, that's an excellent idea. I see um, other questions uh, from the chat. So uh, one question is um, about uh, these potential cross-border meetings uh, where ESPEN 
um, could, uh, where uh, GOM could play a role and how um, the language challenge, uh, if the, the countries are French and English, different languages can be uh, managed. Um, um, well, the, the, we, we have, as you may know, um, gone the GON network, we have been undertaking also this, this needs assessment, and we have heard from many of you that the, the suggestions for uh, a more structured uh, cross-border meetings uh, to address cross-border issues, and this is, this is something that has been echoed by, by many, many, many countries we have interviewed, and uh, we, we have to decide how this can be done. Uh, and what what could be the the way forward? Um, um, uh, I, I direct this this question also uh, to the panelists and and to Professor um, Walker. Um, please let me know if if you have any any comments um, on uh, on uh, structured uh, cross border meetings. And. Yeah, Dr. Salisu, um, do you want to say something? Whatever, in French or in English? <laughs> in French. <laughs> what, whatever you want, no. uh, come, come, uh, like the translation. Like the language conflict, so you speak in French. So, uh, je, je pense que, uh, avec la réalité de source, quand on fait nos réunions transfrontalières, désormais la question de. Dr. Salisu, who's it la? We cannot hear you. Hello? Uh, we have lost him. So in the meantime, I will go to another question. Another question from the audience is, um, if um, the, the speakers can can talk more, uh, particularly Professor Walker, if you can talk more on, on the entomological uh, monitoring um, uh, in uh, in Nigeria, Professor Walker. Professor Walker, can you hear? Can you hear me? I think uh, there is also an, a connection issue. Professor Walker. Okay. Um, it seems that uh, Professor Walker, can you can you hear us? I can hear you now. Okay. Great that you are back. Um, so as as uh, yeah, we're, we're passing to the next question because we we uh, uh, cannot hear Dr. Salisu's comments. Um, so the next question would be uh, if you can talk more about the entomological uh, monitoring, Professor Walker. Entomological monitoring. Yes. Entomological monitoring. When an area is suspected to to have interrupted transmission, we now do epidemiological evaluation. In that area, already we have selected based on epidemiological criteria, communities where we are going to evaluate. And those communities we are going to collect blood samples or blood spores for a minimum of 3,000 children under 10 in the area. And we're spread at area anyway. And then when we analyze it, we now compare our results with the WHO guideline. If it fits within the WHO guideline, we now reclassify the place as uh, interruption, transmission, uh, suspected to be interrupted. We now go immediately and con con conduct epidemiological evaluation 
by choosing breeding size, identifying breeding size of black flies, prospect the area, confirm that we can get flies there. Then we collect both uh, trap and human landing method. In the area transmission zone, we collect a minimum of 6,000 flies, female flies, and then subject them to visual analysis. If we get the result, we now compile it with the result of the guideline of WHO, which we have adopted in our own national guideline. We can reclassify, or we can say, let us continue to treat. And even when we say we, we have eliminated transmission, after doing that, we wait for two or three years and go back again to look for the flies and analyze it to see whether the flies are still carrying macrofilaria of onco or not. That is post-treatment evaluation surveillance like we are now doing in Kaduna, Tamfara, KB, and others. In Plateau and Nasrawa, we, we now have agreed and approved that we have eliminated onchocerciasis. So we are still collecting our flies, analyzing them to make sure that the flies are not carrying any macrofidaria in, the, in, the, in their heads. That is how we do our entomological evaluation. But we use topographical map sheet and uh, Google Earth and Atlas to select those communities for, and river systems, making sure we take into consideration whether they are first line villages in Epinoco or not. And when we choose first line villages, we also choose second line villages and also choose randomly other villages to have complete spread in the endemic area so that no, no person or no place will be left behind. And that is what we do in this uh, assessment. Thank you, Professor Walker. There is another uh, question on, on, in, on this uh, um, area. Um, how long does it take after the, the fly catching to test, analyze, and return um, uh, feedback to partners? Professor Walker. Yes, did you hear the question? Professor Walker, did you hear the question? Professor Walker, are you still there? Can you hear us? Professor Walker? Okay, while, while we are trying to get Professor Walker back, uh, doc, Dr. Salisu, um, you wanted to comment also earlier. Do you do you have the chance to comment now? Yes, yes, I can contribute the the, the internet uh, problem. Okay, I don't know. I, I thought I thought you wanted to comment something um, before. So, c'était c'était par rapport à la question des langues, c'est-à-dire la langue pendant les questions transfrontalières. Donc, comme je disais, que à cause de la rareté des ressources, il faut qu'on réduise les coûts. En tout cas, nous, ce qu'on fait maintenant, eh, au-delà eh, de... Pendant nos réunions, on s'arrange toujours à avoir quelqu'un qui parle les deux langues. Même si le partenaire ne finance pas, en tout cas, l'interprétation et l'interprétariat, parce que ça coûte très cher, donc on utilise des, des gens qui font, qui font souvent des gens qui sont dans les écoles de, de formation en langue, on les utilise pour nous aider à bien organiser, à bien communiquer avec nos partenaires. Donc, c'est toujours faisable. Mais la question de langue ne doit pas continuer, constituer une limite dans le partenariat entre deux pays. Parce que le partenaire n'est pas toujours là. Il faut bien qu'on trouve les moyens de pouvoir communiquer entre nous sans que eh, demander l'appui des, des uns et des autres. Voilà ce que je voulais ajouter. Nadia, merci beaucoup. Merci, Professeur Walker. Um, 
Okay, thank you very much. That's good to know uh, that there is a solution for the language situation. Professor Walker, are, are you back with us? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you hear us, Professor Walker? I think it's uh, it's difficult with the internet connection. Uh, yeah, it's very very difficult. Yeah. So, um, Professor Walker, can you hear us? So, uh, um, I think uh, there is some internet issue. Professor Walker, can you hear us? Hello? Okay, um, so uh, as we are almost uh, at the end of the time, so we have just one minute left, uh, we will collect the remaining questions in the chat and, and um, uh, get and, and look at them and uh, follow up uh, on them afterwards. Um, I don't know, Professor Nwoke, are you are you uh, there to say a couple of closing words? Do you want to close the meeting? I, I don't have any other thing to say, except that we need to work as a team and make sure that we stamp out on consequences. And we cannot, we need to work as a team mobilize resources together and share data and information that will enable us to uh, work as a team. And with the gun in position, we should be able to produce a, pro a uniform protocol for what we are doing so that uh, everybody will understand what we are doing without uh, stress. Like pointed out by one of my colleagues, the color code, we should do it uniform color code, reporting pattern. It makes it easier for us, for everybody to understand what we are doing. Excellent. And uh, subsequently, like you invited the uh, Cameroon, Niger, and the Benin. When, when they are invited in future, they should be able to share their data at the boundary of the country that is presenting. Like if I am to present a be a panelist in Cameroon, I should be able to tell them what is happening in the boundary of Cameroon and Nigeria. It will guide them in their own plan for the elimination. Like I said, the results we have in the boundary zones of Cameroon can be an instrument to guide them. It will now cause them to go back and find out what is happening at their own end and share it so that we can now mobilize. Like they speak French, we speak English. We can use our mobilization materials, IEC's materials, and translate it to English and French vis-a-vis -vis whichever one is good. It will mobilize everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Nwoke. These are all excellent suggestions and uh, very rich discussions and, um, and many, many good ideas uh, to move forward. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Nwoke. Thank you very much to the, the panelists, uh, to all of you. Um, thank you very much uh, to the um, participants um, for, um, uh, uh, particip for, for sharing their comments in, in the chat. As usual, we will share the slide presentation and the recording of um, uh, this meeting with all of you afterwards, and we look forward to, um, yeah, to working together in a team as, um, as, as suggested by Dr. Nwoke. And um, uh, yeah, and thank you very much uh, for your uh, efforts, engagement, and interest. Um, thank you all, and uh, have a good uh, rest of the day. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank, thank you. For you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. George, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? 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 Fine. Nice to meet you Merci again. Beaucoup. Merci, Nadia. Merci. Abri Abrigado. Obrigado. Merci. Merci. Moderateur, Nadia. Merci, tout le monde. Au revoir. Merci, Merci. 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 Merci.